My name is Steve Wood. I'm the president and CEO of Spirit Engineering Incorporated in uh, Grand Junction, Colorado. And we're excited to be here at Oshkosh with our introduction of the Spirit SE1 SLSA. AOPA keeps flying safe, accessible, and fun by protecting your freedom to fly. We are the most trusted one-stop resource for all things related to general aviation. Become an AOPA pilot today. Thanks to Hartzell for sponsoring this video. Hartzell carbon fiber propellers are stronger, lighter, and faster. AOPA members receive a $1,000 discount. We've kept this project under wraps very tightly for uh, a long time because this is a long time coming. We came here unannounced very, very intentionally. First of all, we really didn't want people to know we were coming until we got here. We kind of wanted to catch the market by surprise. The basic specifications for this airplane are as follows. The engine is our engine. We're very creative. We call it the Spirit V2. It develops 42 horsepower at 3,000 RPM. That's a sea level rating of it. It's an inverted V twin. Of course, it's dry sump, three quart oil capacity. It burns two gallons an hour. We, we came part of the way well under two gallons an hour, but we're at high density altitude. We're leaned out. Someone ramming around at sea level, they're going to burn 2.2 or something like that and cruise. If you put it to the wood and you just stay there, you could get your fuel consumption up around three and a half gallons an hour. The, the tank holds eight, that's more than sufficient. We did a three hour plus leg coming here and uh, still had you know plenty of reserve. The first flight of the first prototype, which was not powered with this engine, was clear back in 2013 or 14. It was a commercial off the shelf air-cooled V-twin, let's just say that much. And the performance was fine, but we realized two things. We're at the mercy of a corporate board meeting, and we could get a call the next day and say, sorry, no more engines to you. Now I got a beautiful airplane with no engine. The other thing we realized after handling and you know converting a few of them, because it was sold as an upright V-twin, we inverted it. We said, the only way we're gonna have a reliable source of an engine for our airplane is if we design and develop the engine ourselves. We started flying an airplane with our engine last October. I think it was October 8th was the first flight. The airplane is uh, its pretty slick. I mean, especially for an open cockpit airplane. You can see it's streamlined, it's low drag, so it doesn't take that much power. The airplane will easily get off the ground 500 feet at gross weight, sea level standard. Cruise speed, right over 100, 102, 100. Three. Kind of depends on how, how fast you want to run the engine. We said this is a recreational airplane primarily, and I've made this comment to several people. We didn't envision traveling in this airplane. It's a hoot to travel in. We came here on 88 gallons of gas from Western Colorado combined for four airplanes. We had a 180 chase plane, Cessna 180. Every time we stopped for fuel, we put a lot more gas in the 180 than we put in the four airplanes. And he wasn't slowing down that much to stay with us. It's a very, it's hard to describe, it's a very snug, uh, wonderful feeling to be passing over this beautiful country on about two gallons of gas an hour. You know, the Prius is down below, you can't do it. A lot of motor scooters can't do it. And yet, I came with every, I'm camping here. Everything I'm camping in, I brought in the airplane with me. They just perform flawlessly. And every leg of this trip was a new low density altitude experience for us because we've done all this development out about 5,000 feet above sea level and the, most, the last part of it at very high temperatures. We've had 90 to 100 degrees pretty much steadily for the last couple of months. So you can imagine we're taking off in density altitudes of 8,000 feet or higher and uh, this thing has a wonderful service ceiling. It's because it has modest power but it has really nice span loading. Span loading is low, that's why it has a 17,500 foot service ceiling. A lot of people have asked me, what sort of transition do I need to be able to fly? It's obviously it's a single seat airplane. Here's my pad answer so far. Show me three good landings in a Luscom. You will not bat an eye flying this airplane. It's similar to a Luscom in this regard. It has a pretty powerful rudder. And oftentimes if someone's coming out of a Cub, a Champ, a T-Craft, and they get in a Luscom, they're used to moving their feet a certain distance or pushing a certain force, and they'll find they need about half that in the Luscom. Same thing in this airplane. We designed the airplane with an expectation that people would love it because it's pretty. Okay, first of all, I, we haven't had anybody say, oh, that's ugly. No one's gonna say that because it's not true. But I think maybe the folding wing, the, the folding wing, it has a lot of innovative features if you study it. 
we look at it this way. The four things, principally four things that we can control that make aircraft ownership expensive. Acquisition cost, operating cost, storage cost, and maintenance cost. One of the biggies for us is the wings fold. Fits in a standard toy hauler, standard, you know, car hauler trailer. If I showed someone how to fold or unfold the wings, I guarantee you can do it in under two minutes, either way, safely, securely, and by yourself. My criteria going in was if it takes more than five minutes, it's an abject failure, it won't get used. So the folding wing, another one of those serious gulp decisions because you know, as a designer, I'm adding weight and I'm certainly adding design and development time to the project. We put on the website starting at 69,500. That's this basic airplane with a comm radio, doesn't have strobe nav light tips, doesn't have landing and taxi lights, doesn't have a transponder. All these airplanes have all of those. They have, they have all the lights that you could put on them and they have a trig transponder with ADS-B out. We're not trying to pull anything fast there, but here's what we're really here to do. We're not here to sell these three airplanes. We're here to decide what build rate we need to be at when we get back to Colorado. And we're pretty confident that we need to be at a pretty brisk build rate but we'll do that at a ramp rate. We have inventory that can be completed fairly quickly, but what we won't want to do is run through that inventory and then have a lull period. So our ramp rate will be designed to use up the inventory that's there so that the, what's coming behind it doesn't leave a gap.